It's normal for your child to be anxious from time to time, but how can you know whether his worries are cause for concern? Learn more about the causes, symptoms, and treatment options for anxiety disorders in children. All kids have fears, whether they're scared of a dark bedroom, a new school year, or the neighbor's dog. Most will simply complain about these worries and move on. But about 7% of children aged 3 to 17 have an anxiety disorder, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention CDC, and these seemingly trivial things can be debilitating for them. Indeed, for children with anxiety, worries generally get more intense over time instead of naturally fading away. No matter how much you answer an anxious child's questions or tell her things are fine, she can't absorb your reassurances, explains Tamar Chansky, PhD, author of Freeing Your Child from Anxiety. In severe cases, kids with anxiety may stop eating, sleeping, or going to school. At the very least, their instability can set them apart from their peers, often at an age when fitting in is crucial. If you think your child has anxiety, read on to learn more about the causes, symptoms, and treatment options for the common disorder. What causes childhood anxiety? Your child's anxiety is just the luck of the genetic draw, explains psychologist Stephen Kurtz, PhD, president of Kurtz Psychology Consulting in New York City, who specializes in childhood anxiety. There's a sort of smoke detector in your head that's supposed to go off when the brain perceives danger, and it triggers the fight-or-flight response, says Dr. Kurtz. In anxious kids, their smoke detector is set to a much more sensitive level, and they also have a much more dramatic reaction. In fact, research has shown that differences in stress response can be detected in babies as young as six weeks old, proving that nature is at least as important as nurture when it comes to anxiety. There's a family connection too. Kids with an anxious parent are up to seven times more likely to have an anxiety disorder compared with kids whose parents are not anxious. The link is both biological and behavioral, explains Golda Ginsberg, PhD, professor of psychiatry at the University of Connecticut. There is an inherited risk, but when parents are overprotective or model their own fears, they increase their child's risk of anxiety. Difficult situations, like the death of a relative, moving, or even the stress of having an unemployed parent, can also push manageable anxiety into a full-blown disorder. A major event can sometimes make a child feel like everything in life is changing and nothing is predictable, explains Dr. Chansky. Signs of anxiety in children even happy-go-lucky kids tend to worry more once they hit age 7 or 8, as they gain a greater understanding of the world around them and realize how much isn't in their control. At this age, there's a shift from monster under the bed kind of worries to real life ones, whether it's that a natural disaster will strike or that they'll let the baseball team down, says Jen Berman, Psy. D. Parents advisor and author of the A to Z Guide to Raising Happy, Confident Kids. The difference between normal worry and an anxiety disorder is severity. A young child may not realize her worries are unrealistic or exaggerated, and she may only express them through behavior. If he's anxious that something might happen to a parent, for example, he may have trouble separating or falling asleep. If he can't stop worrying about getting sick, he might seek constant reassurance or wash his hands obsessively. Children who have severe anxiety will also avoid triggers. If a child refuses to participate in activities other children enjoy, throws a tantrum before every appointment with the dentist or doctor, gets sick on Sunday nights, or spends a great deal of time in the school nurse's office, serious anxiety may be the culprit. Other anxiety symptoms in children include headaches or stomach aches without medical origin, trouble sleeping, and acting out. Your child might also ask fear-driven questions that get worse over time. For example, it's perfectly normal for a child to ask, can that happen to us? After seeing a news report about a house fire, it's not normal to obsess about that fire several months later. Types of anxiety disorders in children Anxiety in kids can manifest as several different disorders, and many children have a combination of the following conditions. Generalized Anxiety Disorder Generalized Anxiety Disorder GAD, is excessive worry about everyday things, as well as a tendency to imagine the worst-case scenario. GAD often focuses on performance in school or sports, will I pass the test? What if I don't play well? Will I get into a good college? 
It may drive extreme studying or practicing, making the child his own tyrant. Kids with GAD worry incessantly about their ability to meet expectations. They often seek reassurance in an attempt to assuage their fears, will we get there on time? What if I can't fall asleep the night before the test, and they can be rigid and irritable. Their stress can lead to physical symptoms, including fatigue, stomach aches, and headaches. Social anxiety disorder A child with social anxiety fears meeting or talking to people. Most children are occasionally shy or self-conscious, but when a kid is excessively worried about doing something embarrassing or being judged negatively, she may have this disorder. Social anxiety may prompt a child to avoid school or other social situations, and to cry or throw tantrums when pressured to go. Some children have social anxiety focused on performing, for example, speaking in class or ordering in restaurants. Others may get anxious even when they're not in the spotlight, which makes them fear going to school, eating in public, and using public restrooms. Selective mutism A child with selective mutism talks easily with family and friends, but she gets so anxious in front of others that she can't speak at all. Peers, teachers, and authority figures sometimes interpret this silence as willful, but the child is actually paralyzed by extreme self-consciousness. Selective mutism can cause a child severe distress, since she can't communicate even if she's in pain or needs to use the bathroom. It can also prevent her from participating in school and other activities. Some children seem frozen, like deer in the headlights, when they are called upon to speak. Others will use gestures, facial expressions, and nodding to communicate without talking. Even at home, children with selective mutism may fall silent when anyone other than a family member is present. Separation anxiety disorder If separation from parents or caregivers causes extreme distress, your child may have separation anxiety disorder. Difficulty separating is normal in early childhood, it becomes a disorder if the fear and anxiety interfere with age-appropriate behavior, whether it's letting a parent out of her sight at 18 months or being dropped off at school at age 7. A child with separation anxiety might have extreme difficulty saying goodbye to her parents being alone on one floor of the house, or going to sleep in a darkened room, because she is terrified that something will happen to her or her family if they are separated. She might avoid playdates and birthday parties, at home, she might, shadow, one parent constantly. Separation anxiety could also trigger stomach aches, headaches, and dizziness in anticipation of the separation. If separation from parents or caregivers causes extreme distress, your child may have separation anxiety disorder. Difficulty separating is normal in early childhood, it becomes a disorder if the fear and anxiety interfere with age-appropriate behavior, whether it's letting a parent out of her sight at 18 months or being dropped off at school at age 7.